I know who you really are. I know what you're really capable of. And I can see it. It's still there. It's still there. Welcome to Knock Bro Nation. Welcome back, Knock Bro. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back to review episode 13 of Fear of the Walking Dead. Blackjack. Blackjack, yes. I'm yeah. just about to say that. <laughs> yeah, Blackjack. Very good episode. Um, we'll probably be reviewing this in the three chapter. I wouldn't say three chapters, but three storylines. There were three primary storylines. Uh, John and Strand, um, Luciana, and Morgan and the rest of the crew. So, But all in all, great episode. I thought, um, I thought it was a really great episode. I, I agree. Yeah. Um, we got some crazy, filthy woman stuff in there. It, it is Ignore evident nuts. with three episodes left. 14, yeah. 15, and 16, that we are only going to get this whole story of them scattered and then them coming together. I think it's evident now that we're it not going to get any major storyline. No. Um, but uh, with that said, I still think it's exciting because really a lot of people like to see um, survivors on the road. I do. You know, and that's like one out thing that, in the uh, in the wild. And that's one thing that we love about The Walking Dead and Fear. It's like we get to a certain point to where they're, you know, they're sitting in a place for too long and it's like, God, we miss that action of being out in the wilderness yeah. and always being on high alert and just something can happen in the blink of an eye and they have to react to it. So it's I like it. I've been liking it a lot. So Yeah, so um, let's pick it up. Uh we find out where John So in this review we're going to hit the groups. Yeah, um, we're, gonna we're not going to go in chronolo chronological order. Because it jumps back and forth a lot. Yeah, so. so let's start with uh, John and Strand. Yeah, so we don't know exactly where they're marooned, but from the storm, uh, they got so much water, they are on this little side of uh, the area, I think probably across the road, mm -hmm. um, because their truck is in the middle of the road. We see a street sign in the middle of the road, and they're on the other side of like the highway, probably. And there's like this little shack shed in the background of where they're staying at. Yeah. And that's where they've been marooned for since the end of the storm. So yeah. Don't yeah. know how don't long know it's how been. How long that's been. A couple but yeah, days. Because they're they, running out of, they're getting close to running out of rations. Yeah. And they did say they had about three days worth of rations left, I think is something that Strand had. But yeah. so essentially what's going on here is John is, is trying to get off of the island um, and doing everything he can to get off the island. And Strand has pretty much told him, look, uh, I, I'm just going to hang out here. Strand, if you know, if you've been watching Fear the Walking Dead, you know Strand. You know his personality. You know, he is helping uh, John to, to find Charlie and the rest of the crew, but he still has that reservation where, look, in a way, I didn't really want to be here. I just wanted to chill in my mansion, drinking all that yeah. wine, <laughs> and live in luxury because that is Strand. Yeah. Um. But I think by the end of this, you know, during this whole thing, as John is trying to build a raft and wanting to get across, he's doing his MacGyver thing to do what he can. Strand is just like, look, I, in a way, he, he feels like he doesn't have anything else to fight for. Because he mentioned, like, I don't have anybody to drink with, which he was talking about Madison. Mm -hmm. And so Madison being gone really hurt him and also Nick. And I think he's just like, he doesn't see the rest of them as closely as he probably felt for Madison and Nick. Yeah. It, he knows yeah. that they're good friends, but he just, he doesn't, he's just so sad that he doesn't feel it. Yeah, I, I completely agree with him. I mean, these were the first two people that he had grown to, you know, love after, you know, love in a, in a friendship yeah. type of way, like they were family yeah, yeah. Uh, after the apocalypse. I mean, the only other person that he was that close to was a uh, uh, billionaire dude. Billionaire guy. Or millionaire billionaire guy that he was in love with, with oh with yeah the, yeah his abigail exactly yeah yeah so that was his true love really so it, it what was really great though is that because john's character I, I love his character he is somebody who is very optimistic he's somebody that's you know he he worked hard to find june he knew that he was going to find her and he is going to do everything in his power to get there. Yeah. And the biggest thing that it, I love the big pep talk that John did with Strand saying, look, what you need to look forward to is over there. 
He's like, if you want to have, let's have a drink. Let's save this this drink or whatever when we get over there. Well, that's yeah, where and, we that, need and, to that, get. and that's what happened. So as they are trying to make their way, or John initially tries to make his way, he builds a smaller raft, but he makes it enough for both him and Strand to get across. And Strand's like, nah. Yeah, and, nah, nah, nah. And, and as he starts, you know, getting in the water, he's, you know, uh, Strand sees that a crocodile is making its way towards john Mm -hmm. um and you know what we find out is that the walkers that are walking into this water are kind of making it easy food for the crocodile it doesn't have to try that hard to grab food (laughs) because every now and then a walker will walk in and it attacks it and and kills it so it's really kind of trapped them in a way like they are literally trapped on this island because if they if they stay there, they're going to die of food. If they leave, they're going to get eaten by a crocodile. Plus, they don't know how many crocodiles. They yeah. just know of one. And so John, he says, okay, I can't. This raft didn't work. He's like, I think he said the wood was too dense, so it just immediately sank. So they find, he's going around looking, and he finds this truck up on the hill, which is about to fall over. There's a walker in it. And John says to Strand, that uh, the top of that truck, that little, uh, the topper for it, would be perfect for it. He's like, I can't get up there and get it because of my injury. I need you to do it. It's <laughs> funny because Strand is like, yeah, how many times are you going to pull the injury card? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Their relationship together is pretty funny. Yeah. So Strand goes up there. He's, you know, John is telling him just unlatch the topper and it will just let gravity do its work. But Strand sees a nice, lovely bottle of alcohol that he wants to get. And I was like, oh, God. Yeah, Strand, as soon as I see that, come on, like, man. Oh, man. So, of course, Strand... Goes in there, tries to get it. The walker is trying to get at him. Strand actually falls through the window, lands in the truck, and the truck then begins to topple down. Which was in the trailer. <laughs> which is in the trailer, which um, we thought that's how they got marooned, but that yeah, didn't happen. <laughs> um, I am very surprised that he didn't die. Didn't die. Yeah. Um, not only simply because of the rollover of the car, but as he's rolling, he's with a walker. He's on top of the walker. And, and how does the walker not bite, bite you on him? Just, just yeah. in the time that you're rolling down. Yeah. Uh, look, obviously a TV show, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. As it gets to the bottom, somehow a huge branch went right through the walker's head. Yeah. And strands alive. He's yeah. fine. Um, but guess what? You look down and the bottle was not broken. <laughs> A win for Strand. And once John sees what he did, he was like, seriously? Like, <laughs> this is what you risked your life for? <laughs> but see, that's the thing, though. That's that's with Strand is that it's not just a bottle of alcohol. It's it's something that he, you know, he drinks his pain away, which is sad. But it, I wouldn't say alcohol is something that he holds on to. It's just, it's well, kind of what I mean, he just does. It all goes to his personality. It does. Like, he, Strand is all about what he wants to do and how he's going to live his life and like it doesn't matter who's in his life he even proved that with madison and nick that he's willing to do what he wants to do to further and and improve his life and his path yeah so he's going to do whatever it takes to uh better his life that's true um and even if it is a old bottle of liquor in a truck that is with him and stranded on this island, he's going to do it because it makes right. him feel better. Plus, because it's old, it kind of goes with his thing where he likes luxury. He's like, this is old, this is fancy, got to have it. Yeah. Um, so John goes to work again, MacGyvering the uh, the topper on there. Um, and he's built and he's he's given the talk to Strand saying, look, let's get across there. Let's do this. Let's find him. Let's get out of here. So How are they going to get rid of the crocodile situation? Exactly. Though? How are they going to do it? So he MacGyvers up. He gets the battery from the truck, takes off the horn, and basically hooks it up to where, plugs it on the battery, just <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know, yeah. you know what was annoying before that though? Hmm. How many times did you hear that damn crow chirp in that uh, in that freaking episode? Like before the horn, the crow? Yeah, Couple in the times. background. Yeah, no, it was constantly. Yeah, I heard it. Is it? Re- I would have shot that freaking thing <laughs> like right away. It was annoying. Yeah. Anyway. So he, he builds the raft and they jump on there together. They they use the horn to uh, lure, get, walkers. lure walkers into the water so the crocodile is more concerned with them so they can get across. As they're rowing... Here's another thing with that. Sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> How many things is it going to eat? 
Like eventually, a, a, a crocodile is like any other animal or human. Like once you're full, that's one thing that Strand you're full. That is one thing that Strand mentioned. He was like, "Why isn't? Why is she still feeding? She should still. She should be full by now." Yeah. Because I think they've seen. You know, maybe it was multiple crocodiles. Maybe it was multiple yeah. crocodiles. Exactly. So as they're rowing across, um, John's injury bites up on him, and he actually loses the row. And as the the horn is blaring, a couple walkers come in. The the crocodile is you know uh, distracted. The battery runs out. <laughs> it's dead quiet. And Strand, they're like, we got to get out of here. We need to jump in the water and go back. And John really wants to get across there, but Strand's like, you'll you'll never make it. You're basically trying to swim with one arm. You're not going to make it. And John really wants to go. It, it, yeah. I think it took a lot of strength for him to not do it. Yeah. But they decided not. They jump in the water. They swam back. Yeah, it was sad because in the beginning of the episode, he takes out a little candy that the candy. June had. And he, sn- he sniffs it and it just reminds him of June. And then after the failed attempt to go across the, <clears throat> the water, right. he eats that piece of candy. That was one thing he mentioned about the candy. Yeah, he's, he tells Strand, I'm gonna get across, we're going to get across this thing, and I'm going to give this candy back to June. Yeah. Because this is kind of what's holding, it's kind of what made him, the big pep talk was fight for every day. you got to fight for it. Um, so, fortunately, they couldn't get across. But What's more important, than too, that happens here is he loses his hat. He does lose his hat, unfortunately. So, we've seen a couple shots of, or in the trailer, Charlie finding the hat and handing it to somebody. Uh, maybe that floats downstream and she finds it and maybe hands it back to maybe June if they when they get back together or something. Yeah. So, so next piece. Luciana. Luciana. Now, I liked it. I loved it because, one, we were right. Yeah, it, we were right and we were wrong. Yeah. Like, we, we predicted that this gentleman who was in the trailer, we predicted that she would run into him. Yeah. She did. We also predicted in our predictions video that he would not live, right. um, that this was kind of a lost cause, but that at the same time, he would give her some advice and console her right. um, and help her because she is damaged right You're now. Right. It, it was good. It really was because it, it went towards what Luciana is trying to get past. Mm-hmm. And I think that this helped her. The best way yeah. to get past what she's trying to get through. Yeah. So. And what we were wrong about is that he actually turns out to be somebody really important, not just nobody. Yes. Um, and we'll go ahead and say it. Um, yep. He's the trucker. He's the trucker who started um, leaving the boxes and he has notebooks in his car of his whole plan of what he's doing. His name is Polar Bear. Um, well, but his, his, nickname. His, his nickname is Polar Bear. That's a nickname. His name that, is Clayton. That, yeah. What's her name gave to Sarah him. And, and, and Wendell. And Wendell gave right. him. We'll get to that. We'll get but to anyway. That. Yeah. So <clears throat> what's funny, well, what's interesting is at first Luciana goes, uh, she has a book, I think the book that Charlie brought back to her, possibly. Um, she takes it back to the library. A little quick scene, nothing too much in there. She's just going to the library. Um, but when she does come across the car where uh, Clayton is in, she tries to help him. He, from the storm, his whole dashboard, the front of the car is smashed on his legs. He can't get out. Yeah. Um, she tries. I think she had like a little jack. She tries to jack it up. She tries to jack it up. I don't know up. what she was doing and attempting to do I think that, probably but... trying to lift the dash, yeah, but yeah. It, it caused more pain. But he knows yeah. that yeah. he's not going to make it. Right. And, you know, he starts laughing and, and she she's like, what? You know, what's, what's going on? And he's like, you know, no. <laughs> and he's like... Right. I would love to have one last cold beer. Yeah. And so she does go on a quest to find the beer. But before that, she... He's wondering, like, why are you helping me? Exactly. And so she she doesn't go into great detail, but she says, I have things to make up for. You know, I've lost people. And mm-hmm. one of his big... She does, give in, she does go into detail. Does she? I forgot that Well, she kind of... I don't know if that's what she was talking about, but she tells... Um, what was his name? Clayton? Clayton. She tells Clayton that... I was with somebody and he was dying. And I couldn't do anything Nick. about it. And yeah, I she was couldn't talking about, do anything about it. She was talking about Nick. And that's where he goes in and says, you know, I felt kind of the same way. I alienated my family, my friends. I wanted to get, and I just left them. And then by the time the world went to crap, I couldn't, you know, find them anymore. And I really wish I wouldn't have left them. And uh, that was kind of the big thing that really struck with Luciana is that she kind of, he kind of says, um, you know, you still have a chance 
to help people and do the right things. And you shouldn't lock yourself away. You shouldn't, you know, be away from people who love you and that you, you love basically yeah, was, and, was and, the point. So. And she kind of proves that to him because she does everything she can to go get him that beer. Oh, she went. She looked like she traveled far. She, and she did. And ultimately what she does is she runs into one of the boxes, which yeah. was so great how they put that all together. And like, yeah. here's the guy that was putting these boxes out here. And here's Luciana who finds one of those boxes. Now, she didn't tell him where she got it from. No. Um, and it was also cool how she finds the beer that uh, – right. what's his name's beer? Uh, Jim. Jim's beer. Yeah. <laughs> it's Jim's beer. And she – he brings it back to him, and or she brings it back to him. He's like, it's 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 cold, and she had like an ice pack from a, a there was a, a first, first aid kit, kit yeah. in there with an ice pack that yeah. that kept it cold. Yeah. So she asked him, you know, so when you took when you what what was the job that you took that took you away from everybody? And he was like, I drove trucks, and he you was knew, I knew him, you know, yeah, you knew immediately. Immediately when he said, said I drove trucks, that. and then he was like, there's there's books in the back. Um, of you know i need i want you to take those of to what i was trying to do my plan basically and um he does unfortunately does he does pass away um and part of luciana's story merges into morgan's in the group is how uh luciana uh, finally communicates with morgan over the walkie-talkie and we'll get to that yeah so yeah, the luciana piece was good um i i don't know why i said i didn't there, like it it was just i think maybe a couple parts I could have left behind, but the big part I did enjoy with the yeah, interaction. I really enjoyed Clayton. Uh, did a he that actor did an awesome job portraying that character, mm -hmm. and uh, Clayton is laid to rest by Luciana. Um, but we'll get into that last part. Um, but yeah, before we get into that last part, we get to Morgan um, and the group and the rest. Morgan, June, Althea, June, Althea, gosh, Wendell, Wendell, Sarah, Thank and you. Jim. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. What they are doing, uh, so June is heading out to find Quinn. So they arrive at mile marker 21, which the filthy woman took the tape off. And uh, what they find... I Sorry. <laughs> uh, you told me after the episode, after our last review, what somebody had posted on Twitter. Or didn't uh, AMC post this on Twitter? What's that? About, uh, uh, about uh, Glenn... And how he should have known. Glenn. Or, or not, Quinn? Gwen, yeah. Quinn, yeah. Gwen, Quinn. Quinn, yeah. It was about how um, <laughs> somebody posted on there. Uh, yeah, it was, um, well, Quinn should have realized after he passed mile marker 20 and he immediately came to mile marker 27. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you not paying? I mean, you had to have been paying attention to the mile markers, but yeah, it was, anyway, it was just funny. Yeah. So, yeah, the filthy woman cleaned up the place except for... Purvis. Mm -hmm. They left Purvis. And June um, is frantically trying to, on the walkie-talkie, trying to communicate with Jim or Quinn. And Morgan's like, oh, he's not there. And then they find Purvis and they tell everybody, you got to come here now. And that's where they see Purvis with the, the writing on the head. And, yep. and immediately, um, uh, who calls in first? No. The dirty lady calls in. They're on the walkie-talkie. Yeah. Yeah, they're on the walk. Well, who are they talking to? Nobody. She just... Oh, she comes in. She comes through. June is trying to communicate with Quinn still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sorry. then so the filthy lady comes in and says, um, you know... She doesn't say anything. She puts that oh. walkie up to Quinn's face. Yeah. Who is zombified. He's zombified. And, and makes a noise. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is when she does speak and she says, you know, I... I told you not to leave those boxes, basically. Um, I made Quinn strong. Yes, this is Quinn. I've made him stronger. And Morgan recognizes the voice. And when he gets on, she immediately says, is that you, Morgan? <laughs> and he's like, how did you know my name? And Al immediately says, that bitch has my truck. The tapes. The tapes. And she's like, I know a lot about you, Morgan. And she goes in and it's it's really interesting like she she basically says like i know what you can become i know um, what you're capable i of. know what you're capable of yeah. they don't know but i know what you're capable of yeah now immediately i told i was talking to Jarrell about this and she doesn't know everything about morgan like even morgan didn't tell uh althea everything like yeah. about being clear or <laughs> doing clear or going crazy right um so i just think really, it's i i 
it's it must be just how she probably sees his reaction and how mm-hmm. he's speaking that she knows that he's that he left things out. So I think that she just senses there's more to Morgan than that. And maybe she's good at reading people. I don't know, but she senses it. Um, and so later on in the episode, a little bit, is when Morgan, they're still handing out the boxes. And Morgan's like, you know, the crew is kind of like, look, um, we should just like not try to go after everybody. He's like, stop making all these stops. Let's just get to Alexandria, basically. Mm-hmm. And Jim's kind of like, look, man, you need to tell us what's going on. I think you have us coming along with you. We have a right to know. And Sarah was like, I agree with him. What's going on? And Morgan's just like, look. I have a lot of things to make up for, like everyone here. Let's just get on the road, find our people, and get out of here. And he's like, I'm not telling you everything. <laughs> yeah, before that, um, they reveal the uh, the nickname for the trucker, which yeah. is Polar Bear. Yeah, Polar Which Bear. is pretty cool. Because Althea's like, I want to talk to the guy who started this yeah. thing. And I think the scene all mashes it's up all together, together because yeah. what is happening is Sarah is saying, we're not going to stick around. We're going, we're, leaving, like, yeah. we're not going to look, we're for... taking the truck and we're going, we're yeah. not going to help you look for your people anymore. Uh, it's getting too dangerous. This Morgan. lady's crazy. Yeah. She knows where we're at because we are giving ourselves away by sticking with this mile marker plan. And, and Morgan's like, well, fine, I'll just take your truck and go. This and, was freaking and Wendell's hilarious. like, really? It's like, you know how to, you know, navigate a thousand pounds of truck at 80 miles an hour? Al's like, yeah, it's no different than my truck. Yeah. <laughs> and then when Sarah brings out the knife, she's like, if you think you can take us, <clears throat> <laughs> Morgan, not with his stick, with a shovel. Yeah. And she's, they think about it for a second and they're both like, all right, yeah, we're going with you. Yep. <laughs> new plan, new plan. Yeah, I was, love those two. They're just yeah. they're funny. It was so. it was a little bit of com- com- comedic relief. Yeah. Uh, in that in that scene, it but, had to be. Uh, yeah. um, so later on, while setting one of the boxes out, they write on one of the yes. flaps of the boxes. Yep. Um, if you if you need help, contact us on VHRP channel whatever, four. Channel four. Right. You know, and so. At the end of Luciana's story, she gets on um, where she went to the box and found that beer. Yep. That was one of the boxes that Morgan already written the channel on there. So she, I think it was June that wrote that part. Uh, yes, you're correct. Yeah. June wrote that part. So Luciana contacts and said, whoever left this box, thank you so much. It did more than you ever knew. And Morgan immediately Love recognizes it. her voice I and says, that. Luciana, is that you? And she's like, Morgan? And that's how that story, her story ends anyway. Yeah. So that's cool. I loved that scene because that happens right after she buries uh, Clayton. Right. Um, and yeah. then and then we immediately pick up with, they pick Luciana up. Yep. They're, they're in the back of the truck and Morgan's looking through the notebooks. And um, she was like, he said, she was like, he said that this would help people. This is, this was important to him and this would help people. Um, and uh, it's just crazy how yeah. this one man. Who, who already is doing such a such an amazing act of kindness mm-hmm. is now bringing our group together through this act right um, and yeah it was amazing and, it was and great. Uh, more importantly it brings our group further together because Charlie actually stops by we cut to Charlie yep. who stops at the box and sees the message of the channel and immediately contacts uh, the channel and Alicia at first was like what are you doing what are you this doing? could be a trap. And that was a nice little callback. It was. To season season one? No, two. Two. Of Fear? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when yep. she was trying to contact yes, with someone. Yes, she did. Yeah. 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 And, I mean, it fits in, right? Like, she got duped by someone on a radio. Mm-hmm. She's not about to let Charlie do that. Right. So she was a little skeptical at first until, obviously, Morgan got on the radio and they heard Morgan. And she's like, Morgan? Alicia? You know, so we didn't see that was the only scene with those two. We'll probably see them in the next episode. Well, um, and what well, happens? Yeah, we'll yeah, see. What, well, not the only scene, but a little. Yeah, yeah. During this communication, and I don't understand how this happened because I didn't think you could have three way communication on a two way radio. I don't know. But there was some interference, and the filthy lady starts chatting. Chatting again. Chatting in, saying, I told you. You're making them weak. The the biggest thing with the filthy woman is she believes she's filthy. That yeah, she's filthy. <laughs> but she believes by leaving the boxes and for people 
to get help and not do things on their own is not the way that civilization is going now. She believes that the people that go to these boxes and receive this help are weak because they can't go out and do it themselves, basically. That's her philosophy of this whole thing. Now, she says, if you stop, you know, she's like, Morgan, I know that you're strong. If you stop doing this, then I won't have to make you stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Which is basically killing you and turning you into a walker. Yeah. Um, and lo and behold, Sarah's like, Al, what does your truck look like again? The filthy woman is behind the tr- behind them, coming up on them fast. Yeah, gaining very ground. fast, pretty freaking quickly. And uh, what does she do? She opens up the side of the truck and proceeds to pull the lever. And luckily, Morgan opening fire. I can't. I can't remember. I can't remember now what she says. That Morgan knows immediately and tells everyone to get down. I think the filthy lady says something. I can't remember. I think she says like, oh, I'm going to show you or something like that. And he's like, everyone get down. They shoot the truck. And now, Alicia is hearing all the gunshots and everything through the wall. Yeah. And now immediately, like, well, not immediately, sorry. Uh, we, from what we could see, she was in the front half of the semi-truck as she as she unleashed mm. the weapons. Yeah. So... Immediate, I immediately thought, okay, there goes Sarah, there goes Jim, and there goes Wendell. Oh, right. I don't think she's up at the cab yet. But she's yeah, close. I, she's close to the cab because yeah. obviously we get confirmation in the trailer. Yeah. So they're there. And that's how the episode ends is with that battle scene. Well, well short battle scene. Before that, though, what's interesting, we forgot to add this part, but Morgan on the radio tell, talking to the, oh, to the yes. dirty lady yes. tells him, tells her that... They're going to continue the work. They're going to save people and he can save her. Yeah. He's like, I, he's like, I've been there. I've, I've been where you are. He's like basically saying I've been at my lowest point and I've been able to pull myself out. We're going to continue and then we're going to help you. And I think that was yeah. when, um, they were talking to her before, uh, w- when she brought uh, Quinn on the radio. I don't think that was towards her attacking them. I think he did say right when the poor, they were going to attack. Because really? that she's listening to that whole thing, and then she says something, and that's, that's when right. she okay. is going to attack. So, but yeah, it, it's it's very interesting the philosophy of this filthy woman. Um, it it I the rest of this season is going to be you know they're all going to get back together, and then we're they're going to figure out how to deal with this woman because right now it's only just her. We don't know if she has other people out there that she's has working with her. It I doesn't seem like she does. I don't think she does. It seems like she's, she's just a rogue. Alone, a lone wolf. I think she's a rogue, yeah. And they could take her out pretty easily, but the first thing All they need... to do is shoot her. The first thing they need to do is get off the walkie-talkies. Yeah, I know, right? Because <laughs> she's listening to everything. Yeah. <laughs> she knows exactly what channel they're on, and it's everything. It, and, you know, it's it also seems like she knows Clayton's roots, too. And, mm-hmm. and you know, she was at... Uh, one of the stops. Um, you think she's related to him somehow? Um, ooh. Or no, like maybe not related, but maybe. Save it for the predictions video. All right, we'll save it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, let us know what you thought of episode 13 of Fear the Walking Dead, season four, Blackjack. Uh, another great episode, and I uh, can't wait for this Sunday for the next episode. Yeah, guys, leave your comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new, and follow us at Knock Pro Nation on Twitter and Facebook. Stay tuned for our predictions video of episode 14 on Thursday. We'll see you guys later. We're Knock Pro Nation. We're out.